Today on Running to Him. Our lives will be much better lived if we live with the attitude of repentance. Today we will read Job 3 and 4 and concentrate on chapter 3, verses 20 through 23. Job 3, verses 20 through 23 says, Why is light given to him who suffers, and life to the bitter of soul, who long for death but there is none, and dig for it more than for hidden treasures, who rejoice greatly and exalt when they fill in the grave? Why is light given to a man whose way is hidden, and whom God has hedged in? Well, Job asks the question which everyone asks at least once in their lives. Why does God allow suffering to happen to people who love him? This question will haunt him from this point to the end of the book. And even his friends are less helpful than really conforming him and and comforting him. In chapter 4, Eliphaz speaks to Job about the lack of innocence for every human. He drills in the point by saying, According to what I have seen, those who plow iniquity and those who sow trouble harvest it. By the breath of God they perish, and by the blast of his anger they come to the end. The roaring of the lion and the voice of the fierce lion and the teeth of the young lions are broken. The lion perishes for lack of prey, and the whelps of the lioness are scattered. That's Job 4, 8-11. Now, what Eliphaz says is true concerning the evilness of human beings, and humans are evil and deserve punishment. But that statement doesn't answer Job's questions. Why does God allow bad things to happen to those who actually love him? To answer that question, we must come at it from a slightly different point of view. God created a perfect world. In this ideal world, he placed angels and humans. Both were given the option of exercising their free will. And in Ezekiel 28, we are presented with a discussion of the king of Tyre. Now, most commentators believe that this king represents Satan, and the verses describe his fall. Some angels followed him, and they became demons. Satan then tempted Adam and Eve, and they fell as well. All humans are now cursed with a sin nature that pervades every aspect of our lives. There is nothing that we can do to rid ourselves of that sin nature. All we can do is submit our lives to God through the Holy Spirit and confess our sins as they occur. So what Eliphaz says is accurate up to a point. God is gracious, so our sins do not go unpunished for those reasons. These two aspects of God's nature seem to conflict with one another, and they are in conflict. But just as in a family life and raising children where there is a conflict as well, God balances two aspects. The fact that God is just means that he treats everyone equally, and he is treating everyone equitably as well. In his grace, he provides a way for all people to be cleansed of their sin and renew the relationship in him. God is not the author of evil in mankind. Evil occurs for two reasons. The first is that humanity is evil. The second reason is humans act on their nature. Had Adam and Eve not sinned, the world would have been different. And therefore, the reason evil falls on mankind is that mankind's nature is evil. Thank you for listening. We pray that today's devotion was meaningful to you. We would love to hear from you. You can use either Facebook or YouTube to like, subscribe, share, and tell others about us. If you would like to contact us, you can reach me at PhineasJacobus at runningtohim.net.